Ten Commandments. We're up to number nine. A simple one. One you would not have to think that we would have to go into detail. And we won't get into much detail about the Ninth Commandment. But there are occupations where false witness, lying, slander, liars are known. And you know them, used car salesmen, politicians. And yes, in even the pulpits of the world. The Bible calls them wolves, calls them false Christians, calls them false prophets, teachers of liars. And we are so warned in the Bible about being deceived and the false witnesses and not to be uh, deceived and follow them. But we're also warned in the Bible that we're not to have a false witness. We're not to be liars. So Exodus 20, verse number 16, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Now, who's the neighbor for the Israelites? Is that the guy next door? The tent next door? No. Is that the guy across the street? No. The neighbor of, the, of Israel are the Israelites. Whether the guy lives right next to your tent, lives in your tent, or lives down in another tribe. As Israel is going to set forth. Your neighbor is your brother. Our neighbors as Christians are the people next door. The people we work with. The neighbors that we stand in line at the checkout. Our neighbors in church. Our church neighbors all around our community and all around the world. And you would look for a loophole. Oh, my neighbor, that's the guy the next door, but I can deceive the, the client at my desk. See, he's not my neighbor. He lives in a different town. And But it's not, I live in Daytona Beach. It's not South Daytona. It's not Holly Hill. It's not, Del, I'm trying to, it's not Deland, my neighbors. Yeah, they are. That includes a whole bunch of people. It's not the state of Florida. Oh, here we go. Are they not neighbors with Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi? Yeah, we are. Aren't we not, as a country, neighbors to Mexico and Canada? Yes, we are. Aren't we not neighbors in fellowship with our missionaries that we send out in the field and to the people there? Yes, we are. Do we not... Go to a restaurant and sit down next to people next to her. Are they not our neighbors? Yes, they are. You're sitting at that desk. Is that not that person being neighbor across your desk? Yes, they are. So the whole conclusion is we're not to lie to anybody. I mean, would God say lie to your name? All right, the Israelite who we're talking about Exodus 20. Would God say, okay, go ahead and lie to the Gentiles? No, because they're their neighbors. And yet lying, it seems to be so simple. And we start off with a very early age when our mom and dad said, did you? No, I didn't do it. The dog did it. Brother did it. Sister did it. And we lie to hide our fears. We lie to get out of trouble. And lying is one of them sins that I preach on the street. Oh, you preach against it? Yeah, because lying, everybody's lying. Everybody has told a lie or stretched a story to make it more beneficial on your behalf. Have you ever stretched the story? As you go to Deuteronomy chapter 520, have you ever called out sick and you were not sick and you had another agenda? Then that's a lie. That's most definitely a lie, boss. I'm saying that. <coughs> Sick. Okay, let's go. That's a lie. Santa Claus, Easter Bunny, Tooth Fairy, Hobgoblins, they're lies. Christmas, the birthday of Jesus, December 25th, 
by the history, by the, by the studies that I have, it's a lie. I'm a good person. That's a lie. 520, Deuteronomy. Neither shalt thou bear false witness against thy neighbor again. So Romans 13, 9. Let's see what Paul says to the Christian. Romans 13, 9. Well, see, that's Old Testament. That's the Jews. Okay. Paul writing to Roman Christians. Romans 13, okay, 13, 9. Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. There it is. Well, see, what you read is under the law, but what did Romans say? Romans is written on this side of Calvary after the saving grace of Paul given to the church. The gospel is Jesus Christ suffered and died according to scriptures and was buried and rose again according to scriptures. And the ways that we lie, you're going down the road. And you see those little red blue lights. You pull over. Officer, what did I do? You knew exactly what you did. 99% case, you knew. Maybe that 1% you didn't know. I mean, I got pulled over one time and I didn't know that my tail light was uh, yeah, my tail light was out. I didn't know that, but I've been pulled over. I knew exactly what I got pulled over for. Have we not come up with excuses to the boss why the job wasn't done and the excuse is not or less than true? Have we not gone to John chapter 8, verse 44? Now, whose side do we take when we lie? Taking sides. John 8, 44. Year of your father, the devil. Ooh, that's not good. I'm a child of God. And the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. Thou shalt not steal. Coveting. We'll get to that last, Lord willing. <laughs> Look at the devil's already broken commandment. He abode not in the truth. Uh-oh, we're getting close to where we are. Because there is no truth in him. So an occupation of the devil is like sales, used car salesman, a politician. There's no truth in him. Watch. When he speaketh a lie, false witness, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar. There's a lot of other liars, but he's a liar and the father of it. So when you conceive a lie, a false witness, a slander, who conceived that? Your father, the devil. And you may be a child of God. Would a lie come from God? Absolutely, correctly not. No way would God have you to lie. Let me, I got some references here. Let me look at, I did not write down, but let's look at, boy, I just got All right, let's look at some verses here. Psalms 89, 35. These are not in my notes, so bear with me. We'll go back to my notes in a moment. We looked at the devil. He's a, he's the liar. Psalms 89. Psalms 89. The devil's a liar. Psalms 89. Give me, I didn't write these down. 35. Lord, lay this on my heart. Once I, God, have sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. God says, I'm not going to lie. Unto David or anybody else, we'll, we'll see in a moment. Uh, 1 Samuel 15, 29. 1 Samuel 15, 29. I'm going to try to do these in order. Forgive me if they go out of order. Working on the back of my Bible. and got to go back and forth, so forgive me. So, fifth, what did I say? First Samuel 15, 29. And also the strength of Israel, capital S, that's God, will not lie. How's that? Again, another place. Revelation 21, 27. Revelation 21, 27. We looked at the devil's a liar. 
God is not. Revelation 21, 27, and there shall in no wise enter into it, the city of New Jerusalem, anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie. You better be washing the blood of Jesus Christ, because if you're not washing the blood of Jesus Christ, and you've taken one lie, one lie, you didn't steal that cookie. Without the blood of Jesus Christ, you're not going to heaven. Because you're a liar. Oh, I'm sorry. Hebrews 6.18. Hebrews 6.18. I guess I'm trying to do this the best order right then. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, and is nigh unto cursing, whose end shall be turned. Okay. Hebrews 6. 18. Oh, I was reading 6 8. Excuse me. 6 18. That by two immutable things, that which it was impossible for God to lie. God impossibility, impossibility cannot lie. How's that? Titus 1 2. Titus 1 2. The devil will lie. God cannot lie. Titus 1 2, the hope of eternal life. That's what I have. Which God that cannot lie. Look, look, look at that. Look at that. Numbers 23 19. This one should be familiar. Numbers 23 19. Let's be familiar with Bible readers and studiers. So the devil will lie to you. God's impossible. God is incapable. And God will not. And I can't turn this page. Why is the page of my Bible sick? I apologize. 2319. God is not a man that he should lie. Oh, look at the implication there. Are you a man? You're going to lie. Are you God? You're not going to lie. So how's that? So we have the devil, the liar, the father of lies. We have God who is not a liar. He cannot be a liar. So Christian, Christian, when you have spoken a lie, you are not of God. You are of the devil. You are of the devil. I say it again, you are of the devil. Did we not read that in John 8, 44? And lying could be so simple. You can lie to yourself, oh, I look so good. I'm such a good Christian. A lot of these things today, these job applications, they want you to, you know, what would people think of you? And this is so stupid because you answer me and you can lie. And on job applications, people have lied to get a job. Now, Rahab lied to her people of her city about the spies. And God blessed her because that lie protected the life of Israel when God said, I will bless them that bless you. I think there are going to be lies and tribulation for the sheep nation that protect the Jews that when they, they have to lie to the Antichrist and his troops or whatever, to protect those nations. God's going to honor that lie because it protects the Jew. When the, the midwives in the book of Egypt protected the baby Hebrew, the sons of the Hebrews, from Pharaoh, they lied. Uh, a kind of a lie. I wouldn't say it's a lie, but possible half lie. And God gave them houses. God built them up because they protected the Hebrew. Because I will bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you. And throughout the whole Bible, there are lies. When you blame, King Saul blamed his men where it was his fault. Lies are blaming. Lies are to get out of trouble. Lies cause fear. And if we were to speak the truth and do the truth, we would be of God. 
but all the damage it might do to us. Luke chapter 18, verse 20. Look at Jesus. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. And countless times in history and present, whatever the courtrooms of the world, I'm not saying just America, but courtrooms in the world, people have, I, I swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God, or whatever oath they take, if they don't take an oath, where they sit in a chair or stand in the courtroom, whatever their testimony, there are people who have been a false witness where they have lied in a trial and they have perjured themselves. And that becomes misjudgment. Now think about it. Would you appreciate you being on trial and somebody coming up to you at trial and lying to go against your truth? How would you like to have people lie to you? It's not nice. <laughs> it's not good. Mark chapter 14, verse 56. Now watch this. Mark 14, 56. For many bear false witness against him, Jesus. But their witnesses agreed not together. Here the Sanhedrin has gathered Jesus. Judas has sold Jesus out. Jesus is standing before the Sanhedrin and they had multiple people. Matthew 26, Matthew 26, 59. This is God our Savior. This is God. This is the God that made the nation of Israel. He made the priests. Matthew 26, 59. Now the chief priests, that's the Levites and elders, and all the council sought false witnesses against Jesus to put him to death. They hated Jesus so much. I don't know how they do it. I mean, they put an ad in the paper. They went and sent people out looking for people who will lie about Jesus so we can condemn him and kill him. And as we talked about before, you can commit a crime and not do the crime. For whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after his heart has already committed adultery with her. Thou shalt not commit adultery. You cat whistle, you, you wolf hound, you, you ogle that woman. You committed adultery in your thoughts. You have violated, thou shalt not commit adultery. These priests, these elders of the nation of Israel have committed, thou shalt not bear false witness. And notice the wording. Thou shalt not bear false witness. And when we come to Mark 14 and Matthew 26, the Holy Spirit said that they said they went looking for false witnesses in violation of their own scriptures. Oh, Jesus, how dare your disciples? Oh, they don't wash their hands. Oh, look, 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 look at it. They're rubbing the wheat with their hands to get some food. Oh, the violation. Oh, Jesus, you said a word and the man's hand came back and it was healed. Oh, how bad. And yet they violated. Thou shalt not bear false witness. We're holier than thou. Oh. You know, they, they had to hurry up with, with Jesus' dead body because we don't want to be offended. We don't want to be, you know, soiled because the holy feast is coming. You murdered him. Well, our hands didn't know. You thought about it, you put the you put it into action. You are murderers, and you violated the, the, the commandment that we're studying, the ninth one, thou shalt not bear false witness. And Christian, if they bear false witness against Jesus, don't you marvel that the world hates you, that they will not, they will also bear false witnesses against you and the truth. I've had people do it with our with our ministry. They lied. They lied. Proverbs 6.19. Proverbs 6.19. Okay. Proverbs 6.19 is impossible. 14. 
That's impossible. No. What? There's error. Or I am not God. All right, try 12, 17. Let's see if we're safe there. Oh, wait a minute. I'm in the Song of Solomon. Look at that. I wonder is my Robert 6. I'm in Ecclesiastes now. <laughs> Forgive me. 619. Proverbs 6.19. Ah, there it is. A false witness. Ready? That speaketh lies. There it is. Well, you see, Brother Stiley, you said thou shalt not bear false witness. I've been bear false witness. I'm just a liar. There it is. There it is. False witness is a lie. Liars are false witnesses. You can't get out of it. Have you ever been a deceitful liar to have somebody do something that was not to their best interest but to your best interest have you given somebody a guarantee a warranty or whatever t and through loopholes or just outright you did not merit that warranty or guarantee or whatever your word was you bared false witness. You lied. Have you ever done anything that you said you would do and did not do it? That's a liar. That's why you should say the Lord will. All right, I'll meet you at 6 p.m. Friday, Lord willing. Because I don't know what's going to happen before Friday, 6 p.m. The Lord may have something. The devil may have something. My body may have something that I can't be there. So at 6 p.m., I don't show up. Let's say I get in an auto accident. I don't show up. I'm a liar. I will find you whatever. And then you forget about it. You're a liar. How about this one? How about this one? Ready? Oh, brother, sister, I'll pray for you. And you don't. And you forget. Forgetting is no alibi, is no loophole for sinning. I'll tell you how you get out of that one. Oh, will you pray for me? I'm having these problems. Let's pray right now. Oh, Lord God the Father, you help this brother or sister or whoever in there. And then you pray for them. And then when you do remember, you see, we lie and we don't know we're lying. Because the devil is crafty at lying and to get us to lie. And that is not the attribute, and that's not the nature of our God who suffered and died for us. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. And I can go into multiple occasions outside the scriptures to tell you where we lie, and we don't even realize it. In a minute, five minutes later, it wasn't a minute. One moment. It's longer than a moment. You lie. I'll make you some cookies. Oh, man, I don't have milk. I don't have sugar. Here's about this. How about this one? You turn the radio dial to any FM, AM station, and any other stations they have, satellite, I don't know what, but you turn on the radio in your car, whatever it's got, CDs, cassette tapes, how old I am, 8-track tapes, how old I am. And you hear, I love you. Won't you come with me, my love? And all the songs, country, hip-hop, classical, all the songs about loving and their lives. There's one I grew up, you know, all full of love. Love you, love me. I'll love you till I die. I love you till I won't die. Their lies because they don't love you. They love your money. How's that? There are people who say, I love you, and they're lying to you. When a marriage breaks in divorce, the party that caused the divorce, adultery, or just, you know what, I've had it, I'm going, see you later, you're too much trouble, whatever it is, you're a liar. Because the vow said, the death do us part. That's why that's removed out of a lot of vows today. 
And if I were, I've been married twice, both my wives have died. I've been faithful to death do his part. And the next marriage, if I had had one, Lord willing, I'm going to have to death do his part. And I'm going to hold to that to the best of my ability. If I don't, if I don't, then I lie. There are military men who've been on the field. Uh, While well, we're talking, go to chapter 12, verse 17. There are men who've been on the military field. I've heard this story countless times from the people. 12, 17. Lord God, you get me out of this. I'll, I'll go to church with my, my mother and I, I will breed that preacher that my mom wanted me to do or I'll do what my mom wanted me to do and they come out of it, they get home to America and they go the other way. You know one thing you can say about that prodigal son in Luke? I'm going to go to my father. I'm going to confess my sins before my father. I'm going to repent of my father. I'm going to say, Father, I, I, I want to be just one of your, your maids. I mean, your handmaids. I want to be one of your servants. I am no longer to be able to be called your son. And that kid did exactly what he said he would do. That's not a liar. Now, Jesus told about another child. He said, Father said, go out in the fields and work today. I'll do it. And then he did not go. That's a liar. Boss, I'll get the work done before the night finished. And whatever happens, whatever distraction, whatever, you don't get it finished. Well, boys, you know, I had a heart attack and they took me out uh, my ambulance to the hospital. I've been in the hospital for a month. You said you would finish the work by nightfall. You didn't do it. You lied. Boss, listen, I know this work has got to be done. And beyond anything that could happen, uh, Lord willing, or uh, any without any distractions, I'll do to the best of my ability to finish this work before nightfall. How about that? You see, we're too rash with our mouth. To say, Israel, when, when Moses came down and told the Israelites the laws of God, we will do everything that God told us to do. Really? You haven't even heard what the law was yet. Exodus 19. Then Exodus 20, God dropped the bomb on you. And how well did you do the word of God? You made the golden calf. Thou shalt not have no other images and idolatry. Thou shalt worship God and no other God. This is the gods that brought you out of here. We we'll eat some chicken. Proverbs 12, 17. He that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. You righteous, Christian? Do you lie? Is it your purpose to lie? Listen, we all lie unintentionally, and I do it. We may be mistaken. Oh, I put it over there on the table. Oh, I don't see it. Oh, it's on my bureau. I'm sorry. I lied. <laughs> you, you oh, see, now we're trying to make excuses. We're trying to make ourselves, but is not a lie a lie? Oh, it's a white lie. It's a lie. And the worst thing about it is coming out of pulpits and is coming out of the mouth of Christians. And it ought not to be. Because when we lie, professing to be a Christian, when we lie, we have taken the side of the devil and we make <coughs> we make God look like the <coughs> excuse me. We make God look like the devil. John 8 44, the devil lies. We read countless verses, God doesn't lie. Now, when a Christian lies, we're of God. Whose side do you think they take when they see us lie or hear us lie? Mistaken is also a lie. You ought not to speak. Jesus said, let your communication be yea or nay. I think he says anything other than that, it's sin. If you're unsure, I don't know is never a lie, unless you're lying about you don't know. <laughs> you want to get away? I just realized, I don't know could be a lie too. <laughs> when people come up to me and they got a question about the Bible, I don't give them the answer I don't know. I will honestly say I don't know. 
but I will look it up. Lord willing. You know, Proverbs 12, 17, it says again, righteousness is truth and deceit is that liar, the false witness. Chapter 19, verse 5. Chapter 19, verse 5. And a false witness shall not be unpunished. And he that speaketh lies shall not escape. All right. Well, you see, preacher, I known this, this guy, and he lied his whole life. He deceived a whole bunch of people, and he died, and he's in a graveyard or wherever he is, and no one ever caught him. Let me give you the answer to that. It's one or the other. It's two answers, one or the other. The judgment seat of Christ for Christians, the great white throne judgment for the unsaved. They won't get away with it. That court case may be finished. The, the judge may slam the gravel down and that person had been pronounced innocent or pronounced guilty by false witness and it goes on forever and it you know nothing ever happens by the lies until you stand before God now whether the glove fit or not God will determine at either judgment and I I have met men in prison who honestly, you know, and swearingly and, and tried every way to convince me, I'm innocent, I don't belong in here. Okay, well, God will weigh it out at the judgment seat of Christ for the saved and the judge the judgment seat of Christ for the saved and the great white throne judgment for the unsaved. It'll be weighed out. We will not go into eternity without God weighing out the truth and the lie. Verse 9, a false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall perish. Now, we almost got the same verse that we got in verse 5. But look at, we have perish instead of escape. Remember when we read in Revelation that a liar that is not under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ goes off in the lake of fire. You can go to hell with the acknowledgement that you are a liar and you won't believe Jesus Christ. Stealing cookies and lying to your parents about who did it and what did it and why you were late, that you that wasn't the true reason why you were late. When you come to the acknowledgement you are a sinner and you don't repent of those lies, you don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I didn't do it when it is a lie will cause you to be cast into the lake of fire. Not me. And it was you will get you against God and to be condemned against God. And you have taken the devil's side. All the lies that we get ourselves into and we don't even realize it. What about when we think about lying? Now, listen, what comes out of my mouth? Listen, I've had times when I worked at the place I worked in Connecticut. I try to be as truthful as I can because those men watched me. And every time I had a couple episodes, I drove a van. And there was something to be happening all night long. I'd be thinking in my head, oh, man, what if I just say this? What if I don't say nothing? <coughs> what about this? And I scheme in my head. And finally, I come up to the boss and say, boss, i got to talk to you in your office. Go in there and shut the door. All right, this is what happened. This is the story. And I tell the truth. Did I not lie when I've been scheming all night and thinking about lies and think about not telling the truth? Yes, because if I look upon a woman to lust after, I've already committed adultery. And if I'm thinking about lying to my boss, I'm also guilty, even though I told the truth. Now, shall we have a little altar call right now? And shall we get our hearts right with God? Shall we, if we confess our sins, lying? Have you not got sins of lies that you have heard me say as illustration, as example? Have you not guilty before God as a liar? Confess your sins, and he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, or face wood, hay, or stubble. I'm serious. I'm honest, Christian. 
And if you're unsaved, one lie will get you into hell because you won't let Jesus Christ wash you of that one lie, never mind all the other sins you've done. To him that knows to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. I told you to confess your sins of lying. If you don't do it, it's a sin. You've added now another sin. 21, 28. Proverbs 21, 28. I don't think the devil wants us to get out because I've <laughs> screwed up many times. Someone, someone out there is listening to this. Well, you know, he was in the wrong book. <laughs> He wrote down the wrong reference. Oh, oh. His Bible got stuck. Oh, oh. And they're going to use that as an excuse, sorry. And Lord, I, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ that I allowed those things to happen. 21, 28. A false witness shall perish. Remember what we read in Revelation. If there's one sin that will put you into hell by not believing on Jesus Christ as your Savior, we saw in Proverbs 6, 19, a liar, a lies, false witness. Those are sin. And they're not putting under the, uh, the blood of the Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. If they're not under the blood, they're not washed, and you will go into hell, according to Revelation that we read. Deuteronomy 19. Deuteronomy 19. Well, you know, we could have done Deuteronomy. I like what my pastor says about that. Get you get you through your Bible. Pastor, you know, we go over here, we go over there. We go, you know, he's like, you know, to get you to know where the books of the Bible are. It's good practice. I like that. Thank you, Pastor. Proverbs 19, 16. If a false witness rise up against any man, there you go. Was I right or was I wrong? Any man, Jew or Gentile, Christian or not Christian, to testify against him that which is wrong. Have you said something wrong? You are a false witness or a liar. Proverbs 6. Then both the man between whom the controversy is shall stand before the Lord, that's Jehovah God, before the priests and the judges, Old Testament Jew, and shall be in those days. And the judges shall make diligent inquisition. I mean, in other words, they're to go out and find the truth in your life. They are to dig deep. They are to search out. They are to find the truth. Behold, if the witness be a false witness and has testified falsely lied against his brother or neighbor or Jew or brother in the Lord, then shall ye do unto him as ye thought to have done unto his brother. So shalt thou put the evil away from among you. All right. Let's take it as the court case it is. You go to court. And you lied as a witness. And a man being charged, let's say a round number, let's say his charges, if he were to be found guilty, he's going to get 10 years in jail. Or but get 10 lashes with a whip. Now you found out during a court case that you lied, and it has been proven in a court case that you lied. You go to jail 10 years or you get the 10 lashes. If that man guilty has to pay $100 because, and you have lied, and your lie is found out, you owe $100. Imagine what would happen to a lot of business practices out there. If you lied about a car, if you lied about, you pay the penalty. How's that? You know, as far as I know, outside of perjury, and it's complicated, but there's not really any laws out there for lying.
I mean, have you ever, I've never met an inmate in the jail ministries I've been in, I don't know how many years, three, three or four prisons. I've never met an inmate, and there's been some heinous crimes, and I'm not going to tell you. I've never met an inmate that was in jail because he lied. It can happen. I mean, some people sign their names that are not their names. I guess that's lying. I guess you get the case like that, but Christian, if they were to bring you to court, if they were to find or could they find you without no one lying, could they find you guilty of telling a lie or lies without no false witnesses? Can the devil, Job 1 and 2, come up to God and say, you see the lies? Can they, can, can they or can the devil accuse you of lying before God the Father? And you need to repent. And you need to get right. You need to confess. You need to watch your mouth. You need to have Lord willing. You need to stop making excuses for your lies and stop looking for loopholes. And you need to repent of your sins and get right with God. Because for you, Christian, it will be wood, hay, or stubble. And for you that are not saved, you will go off through eternity by not receiving Jesus Christ, which is able, able to wash away all your lies and your other sins, but we're talking about lies. 